Today, you and I are going to be unboxing these 18 magnificent puzzles. Oh, just look at them. Of course, what's not a puzzle is the wonderful cube store that provided me with all of these. Everything we unbox today can be found from Daily Puzzles and as usual, code Tingman for a sweet discount. Let's get into it. Do, 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 do. Subscribe, subscribe. Subscribe. Oh, where to begin? Let's warm up with something that I think I'll have a chance of solving this guy. Okay, shoo, shoo, shoo. I'll get to you guys again later. This, my friends, is the Fansin Magic Rainbow Ball because why not? <laughs> it's so cute. Ooh, and it's like a spongy thing inside. So this, of course, is the solved state with all the balls on the inside in their corresponding ring. And this is how the puzzle works. You essentially... <laughs> drive the balls into adjacent slots. Now you'd be forgiven for thinking, hang on, this doesn't seem to be in the same category as, you know, Rubik's cubes and other twisty puzzles, but in principle, it's very similar. I mean, it's essentially a puzzle about displacement and replacement, which in a profound way is pretty much how the Rubik's cube works. Okay, that might be a little bit of a stretch, but let's get into this anyway. I think it's probably scrambled. So we're gonna get uh, black back to where it needs to go. Pink needs to go there, so I'll put that there. Pink is in there. Let's get blue in there. Ooh, let's get blue here. This is actually reminding me a lot of those like number puzzles where you shift all the like squares around and stuff. Okay. It's looking good, sort of. Get red in place here. Where's red? All the way there, what are you doing there? I should actually get um, yellow in place first. Nice. This is the last one I wanna solve, so. Nice, nice, nice. And we're nearly there. It's just these that need to be cycled around. So if we did this to get these two in place, and then, ooh, woohoo, solved. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. This was a really nice bounce off, like not too easy, but can be solved in one sitting, which is pretty cool. Maybe this should have been called the yeet ball. It can be the yeetus ball. For our next puzzle, we have the fans and pyramids, but it's no ordinary pyramids, as you can tell. It is the master pyramids. Oh, look at that. So this is our ordinary pyramids. So three layers, I guess sort of like a three by three. And this is essentially like a four by four pyramids. I have not solved one of these in one sitting before, so let's give it a try. Oh, it's so weird. It's got so many layers. It's a little bit warpy. I'm not sure if I like that very much. Pyramids are usually a lot more stable than this. Oh, what did I do? You need to be pretty careful with how you turn this. It does not have good corner cutting. There are quite a few master pyramids out there, and this is one of the loosest ones I've ever seen. Okay, step number one is to solve um, these inner pieces. Inner pyramids, there are one, two, three. Uh, and in this one, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's give it a go. I've already got three here, which is very convenient. This will give me another one. Maybe do that. Yeah, woohoo. And then this guy, where is it? Oh, there it is. Nice. Okay, that's red done. And then let's do um, yellow over here. Can okay, you swap this guy and this guy? How do I do that? Hmm, let's see, on a normal pyramid, I would do this. Okay, so in that case, do it. Did that work? Woohoo, that worked. Now we're going to do a little cycle to swap these um, centers. Hey. Okay, and then from this point, apparently you can intuitively um, swap these little pieces. So let's see. I need a blue red and it's right there. So I think I can do it this way. Um, I replace this with that and then just move any other piece so you can get out. Hooray! Now let's do our blue green. Um, I think this is the one that's meant to go in there. Let's see. Yes, I'm right. Sweet. Ooh, and I fixed that one too. That was lucky. All right, I've got an idea. So I, I think if I put these two guys side by side and then I replace it this way. Nope, nope. Reverse, reverse. Whew. <laughs> okay, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> We've got this, boys. Yo, 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 I think we're close. I think we're close. I think we're close. That guy in there, that guy in there, that guy in there. Hey! Woohoo! That was um, hard, but fun. The master pyramids. Does this mean I'm a master now? Master of the pyramids. 
this beautiful guy here is the Ready Minx. Uh, Minx, I'm guessing because uh, it's similar to other like Minx ish. Ooh, the sticky tape. Oops. Similar to uh, the Mega Minx, which is a 12 sided polyhedron, a dodecahedron. But it's called the Ready Minx because it's very similar to the Ready Cube, which turns just like this. So it looks like a bit of a strange way uh, to mess up the puzzle. Uh, and actually, let me just let me just scramble the entire thing. Because one thing about this puzzle is that once it's scrambled, it actually looks like art. Like someone drew an outline and then they like, you know, paint filled it with like all of these block colors. It's so, so cool. Okay, that's our scramble. So let's give it a solve. The really nice thing is that that uh, inner pentagon tells you what uh, this face will end up being. Uh, and you can actually tell just moving these sort of uh, edge bits back that you can't actually get like get this white center bit uh, anywhere else it will always be like um, on, on, on this orbit which uh, makes it quite easy to solve let's get this guy in there so I believe I can do that just by doing this and back again uh, I'm gonna take out this edge if I move that white bit in so I'm gonna move this guy off to the side before I move it in and then move it back hooray it means that I did displace that white blue guy so let's move him all the way back. Actually, let's see if I can do it this way. Yay, that's a white side done. And we'll just progressively do all the other colors now. Nice, okay, just the top layer now. And then, ooh, that's a cool pattern. We're nearly done and we've just got this left. But it looks like something's happening. Ooh, nice, okay. I just have two to go now. All right, I've got an idea. So what if I take this out and somehow change the orientation of this? Or like make it like gold all the way around. <gasps> yes. So if it goes to there and there and there, then that's fixed. And then now like put it all back. There and there and there and there. Yo! Hey, that was pretty cool. Took a little longer than expected, but it's really fun solving puzzles without any instructions. Highly recommend the Ready Minx. Next up, two very innocent looking puzzles that I'm not gonna be able to solve. Oh, come on, Ting Man, where's your fighting spirit? I'm sure you'll be able to solve them. <laughs> very funny, you don't understand. These are really hard. Of course, not from this side, but from this side. Yes, exactly. <laughs> What is going on? So these are called the Moyu Puppet Cubes, Puppet Cube 1 and 2 uh, in I think it like sort of increasing order of difficulty and it's essentially a 3x3 three three puzzle wrapped inside a 2x2. Two two. I'm guessing that's why it's called like the puppet. It's a little bit hard to tell that here because it looks like it's like it looks like a 2x2 two two cube but look at the way it turns, right? Oh no, no, it's not turning that way. Let's try this. Look at that. Look at the way it turns. So there's actually a three by three like on the inside of that, which is a bit hard to see there, but it's easy to see here. You can pretty much like see the three by three cube, right? <laughs> that looks so ridiculous that you can even do that. So I should be able to do like, um, like a three by three pattern. I think if I just like keep doing this, there we go. This is that like classic three by three pattern where you like just swap the centers. It feels a lot like a bandaged cube because it's like, uh, some turn, some turns are possible and other turns are not. Like I can't turn this way, but I can turn the other way. It's crazy. Anyway, why do I say um, that I'm never gonna be able to solve this? And why am I scrambling it if I don't think I'll ever be able to solve it? I say that because from what I've heard, um, yeah, it's like near impossible. And I am scrambling it just because, just for the lols. Where do you start? Do you like solve the internal 3x3 first? Do you solve the 2x2 first and then 3 afterwards? Like how do you... This feels like it's possible but then it stops midway and I can't go the other way either. <laughs> this thing has like entered multiple parallel dimensions and returned to Earth. You know what? I'm gonna preserve this guy. Well, I mean, let's... I'll, I'll just demonstrate to you that it turns in a similar crazy way, but... Let's bring you back to normality, shall we? That is the Moyu Puppet Cube. <laughs> Time for a puzzle I might actually be able to solve. This is the Lan Lan Pi Cube and it is very cute. Looks like a fairly straightforward puzzle, but the way it's colored on the side does make it a bit asymmetrical. Urgh, easy enough, right? Let's scramble it and give it a go. I'm feeling it's gonna be harder than I think. Okay, cool. Let's give this a go. Um. So 
So yeah, I'm regretting a lot of my life choices right now. I reckon I'm gonna feel so accomplished if I can just get like yellow and white on either side. I'm not gonna give up. Oh yes, yes. Okay, 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 okay. So let's see if I can get all the colors on the sides right now. So it should go blue, orange, green, red. So I've got quite a few in place and let's see how I go. Can the court records please show that I gave this a really good go? Ooh, hey, let's just cover that and say I did it. Hey, the pie cube, guys. Easy as pie. <laughs> I'll get you one day, son. For our beautiful puzzle number six, we have the Fanson Magnetic Cube style competition, huh? Now, I don't believe this is a twisty puzzle per se, but from what I've heard, it's quite interesting. Oh yes, I think I know what this is. This is like the Soma Cube, except for the magnetic. That's really, really cool. That means that this is one that you can do in your hands. A lot of the wooden like block puzzles need to be done like on a surface because they obviously don't stick together, but this guy can be done anywhere. Okay, so let's give it a scramble. With puzzles like these, I like to do the flat uh, pieces last and sort of deal with these um, sort of like more three-dimensional pieces first. So let's do that. Yep, let's do that. And that, okay, cool. That's good. And then what if we do this? Ah, magnets aren't helping me as much as I thought they would. Let's do that. And then, no, 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 no. Let's do that. Nope. Let's do that. Oh, yes, 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 yes. And then this guy goes here, which means this guy goes here. Woohoo! Hey, that was pretty fun. I think there are multiple solutions though, because this just look the same as that one. Yeah, see, it doesn't. That's cool. So there are like different ways that you can solve it. Ooh, playing cards, magnet. They sure like their plastic. Oh, what, is it actually playing cards? Oh no, it's not. I don't fully get it. If they show you the colors, how is that hard? If it shows you the colors, then you just build it instantly. The challenge is if it doesn't show you the colors because then you have to like decide how it gets put together. Okay, so for those of you who know, this literally is the Soma Cube. It's like the exact same pieces. It also means you don't have to use like these exact cards. You can probably find like uh, pictures online, uh, like maybe these guys over here, and then use this to try and like create those um, 3D shapes. And the challenge, like I said before, is not actually knowing which piece goes where, so. Yeah, that was cool. Have you sometimes wish you could travel back in time? Well, look no further than the time machine cube. So there are different versions of this cube. The simpler version doesn't have uh, like the clock numbers going all around, which makes this one a little bit more challenging because you need to get the numbers in the correct order. So it's essentially a two by two, as you can see. So it can be scrambled just like a two by two, right? But the challenge comes when you do things like this or this. So if we adjust like all of them slightly. Let's go that one. And then as you can see, once you start scrambling it more and more, it starts to look like this. How great is that? So initially I thought this is impossible to solve, but a few things I read actually said it's not too bad, so I'm gonna give it a go. Step number one is to solve it like a two by two cube, and you can see underneath all of these like wheels where the two by two is. So let's do that. I've got two whites over there, white and white. You can also tell from the center of the wheel like what that color is gonna be, so. Let's make the white face right there. Ta-da, it's all white. Uh, and I very conveniently got all the colors right on the edges, so that's really cool. On top, leaving me with um, this OLL, so that's just F and a sexy move. Leaving me on top with, oh, with a skip. <laughs> Best two by two solve ever. And now I can progressively just like uh, do the wheels. So it looks like it's really hard, but if you systematically do it, it's actually quite easy. So starting with a blue face, I've already got um, 10 and 11 in place. So let's just, uh, let's find 12. This is a real test of like my reading the Roman numerals. Oh, that's 12, that's 12, isn't it? So you line 12 up there, right? And it needs to go there. And it's actually as easy as this. Get 12 in place, turn it a bit, and then fix the cube again. That's it. So it's really just more tedious than anything where you just like progressively go through the entire cube that way. Let's finish the rest of the blue. So I've got nine over there. So I'm gonna pair nine up with 10, move it that way. And back down again, very good. Where did 12 go? Oh, did I lose 12? Oops, I did lose 12. Okay, yep, 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 that's all right. Okay, I've got an idea. What if I do the um, other half of, of the blue wheel on this side, and then when I'm done, I'll just like bring this entire half uh, in over there. Yeah, so hard to align like every part of the wheel before you turn it. So now that I've got that, I believe I can like um, 
through a turn like this and bring the entire thing in. Hey, there you go. <laughs> Let's quick double check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Actually, it's the clock more like this. Yeah, it's like that. But then now you can't turn it at all. Speaking of time, let's have a quick time lapse. And there we go. Woohoo! One, two. Or I'm not going to check it too closely because I'm probably going to find a mistake. And I can't exactly travel back to regain that lost time. So, on to the next one. Oh, have I mentioned daily puzzles yet? I have? Okay, cool. Just checking, you know. This one I'm honestly very, very excited about. So this was designed uh, by Greg from uh, Greg's channel. Also the owner of current Guinness World Record largest cube, which is a 33 by 33. How do I open this? <laughs> is the puzzle just like how to open it? Oh, it's just here, yeah, oops. <laughs> I'm obviously doing really well already. Anyway, so he designs all sorts of puzzles. And a little while ago, got this one mass produced. Out you come. So this is the multi cube. Pretty cool packaging, I must say. And I mean, at first glance, it already looks pretty complex, right? But the genius of this is that it's almost like four puzzles, like four mechanisms in one. So you can probably already see on the inside, uh, like three by three, right? But if you look at it, right, it doesn't really make sense how it's a three by three, right? That, there aren't any sort of like, you know, clean angles. Oh, goodness. Goodness of the gracious. Um, but yeah, apparently it's because uh, that inside is actually based more off a dino cube rather than a three by three. Isn't that insane? So that's apparently how you're meant to solve uh, the inner bit. Like you sort of think of it like a dino cube. And meanwhile, on the outside, you can see it's cut like a cube. Like you turn it this way. But it really has like a bit of a doubled skew quality to it because you can also turn it like that. It is quite remarkable. Not only the way he designed it, but that, you know, it just, it turns really, really nicely. Oh, yikesy yikesies. Let's just hold it like this. It might be the last time I ever see it solved. It's so tempting to just put it here and just leave it like that. But <laughs> it was good knowing you solved cube. Oh my, what have we done? Ain't no going back now. So I'm not joking when I tell you that I will not be able to solve this. Well, not under like, you know, a day. You know what? I will give myself, oh, that looks like a rainbow on the inside. It's so pretty. I'm gonna give myself a big pat on the back if I can just solve that little dino cube three by three thing on the inside. So let's give it a go. Okay, step number one done. I've got the cross on all of those little guys. Sweet, that worked. I don't know if I broke anything else, but I got that working. Okay, so let's keep going. Oh, that worked. Okay, I've got that, that, and I just have these three little edges at the top, which I believe is like a three edge cycle. It's sort of like how in the dino cube you can, you can get something like this, where you just need to like swap three around. So I think, that I should be able to do it just by doing, yeah, just by doing that, just a series of like sledgehammers. Did that do it? Nope, so let's do it again. Did that do it? Hey, I did it. it only took like literally 30 minutes. <laughs> there is so much more to do. Once again, look guys, that's not even the right color like around it. Aren't I good at puzzle solving? Greg, mate, you're a genius. Despite the complexity of this puzzle, I actually do recommend it. It's a very, very pretty puzzle. Also, every time you buy it, I believe uh, it benefits Greg's channel. So yeah, the multi skew, get in there. My poor brain needs something simpler and hopefully they will be provided to me right here. <laughs> this guy is a three by three by one. Now I've unboxed something like this before, but there's a huge difference here. So, you know, it turns like that as per normal and everything. But are you ready for the huge difference? Here it is. Yo, woo! How cool am I? Oh, yes. Yes for refresh rates. Did you see that? That's pretty cool. It didn't actually go backwards in real life, of course, just the frames per second and everything, but I love it when that happens. So pretty. That's it, that's that. There's nothing really complex to this. It's actually quite hard to scramble it because like, it's always like solvable in like, you know, five moves or something like that. And open up our 
beautiful 2x2. Two two. So what makes this 2x2 two two unique is that it is the 2x2 two two mirror blocks. The 3x3 three three mirror blocks is actually a pretty popular puzzle. And what makes it unique and also not need a color scheme is that every single piece has a different shape. No two are alike, which means you can literally do this like uh, with your eyes closed. And as you scramble it, you end up getting like really cool um, <laughs> shapes like this. Like what even is this, right? Once again, this went through like the fourth dimension, right? That went like when it spat it out. Uh, but you can see that just based on shape, it looks like these two uh, would go together. So maybe um, this guy might go there. Yep, and then this guy might go there. Nice. And then from this top one, you can sort of like um, decide how like that one probably goes there, which means this might be like, yeah, nice. Yep, and so now I just need to swap these two pieces around. And there you go. Ah, that makes me feel a lot smarter. So the main trick of this is recognizing cases like um, uh, this, where you have like a two piece swap, like this, uh, where you've got to swap these two pieces around and realizing that it's the same as uh, something like this, where you just have to swap these two pieces around. Highly recommend the two by two mirror. Oh, actually also, as far as mirror blocks go, like this is really, really smooth. What brand is this? Oh, this is a T mirror block. So yeah, get it. Now that I've had my confidence restored, it's time to try a puzzle. Just let's look at that. Do I even need to open it? It's time to open a puzzle that makes grown men cry. By grown men, I really just mean myself. This is the Axis Cube. In fact, it is the 4x4 Axis Cube. So there's a 3x3 Axis Cube as well. I'll show you soon why it's called Axis. So at first glance, it just looks like a cube with really strange like diagonal cuts everywhere. But if you hold it at the right angle, for example, like this, can you see how it has four layers to it? One, two, three, four. <laughs> I'm so scared to like even scramble it. Let me grab a four by four real quick. Here we are. So um, the four by four, it can be turned like a two by two or like a three by three. Like that's if you just solve using those outer layers. But actually I wonder what that would look like if I did a pretty famous two by two move, which is uh, R2, F2, R2. And it sort of gives you that pretty cool pattern. I am so scared to try it on this. There's no time like the present, right? Okay, here we go. And so that's my thing there, so. Uh, two. <laughs> Just stop for a second to appreciate this. This looks like some kind of like rainbow spaceship. And then F2, yep, F2. And then R2. <laughs> that is so great. See, so what's hard about this is that it's so, so challenging to recognize that that is that because it's a shapeshifter. So you do whatever you want to the four x four and it stays in cubic shape. But this guy just goes into this. Let's do a three x three alg to it. So let's do a T-Pam, one of these guys. I don't even think I should. There was so many moves like just doing the T-Pam. Okay, what if I just did uh, like this move to make like uh, this T headlights. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So here it is. So it'll be front and then front. Here we go. <laughs> Gorgeous. Look at that. That's the that's the same thing. How do you even recognize that? And look at that. It's like, get it guys, just hanging, you know, doing my thing. You know, I'm miles away from you and I can hear you all going, oh, you big chicken, too scared to scramble it, are you? Well, yes, I am. I am a chicken. If you're so brave, you get in and scramble it. Bark, 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 bark. Six puzzles to go. Which one next? Let's do the big boy, actually. Yeah. What have you got here for me, son? We have got the Sengso 9 by 9 So some of you may know that I have uh, the Sengso 19 by 19 which is currently, as of early 2021, the world's biggest uh, end by end puzzle with like, you know, the most number of pieces, mass produced. And this is um, Sengso's uh, nine by nine version. Now hats off to them uh, for being uh, brave enough to make to construct such a large cubes and this nine by nine is a pretty decent size, but there are nine by nines that already exist and compared to that, I don't know. It's a little bit funny that they made uh, a pillow nine by nine. Let me demonstrate what I mean. So this is <laughs> out of the way little boy. So this is their 19 by 19, this beast twice 
actually more than twice uh, the number of pieces, like, you know, lengthwise than that. And yet, um, not actually like, you know, twice um, the length. And that's because the pieces are just like way, way smaller. Uh, but it makes sense that this guy has, has to be pillowed, that is have curved edges, because that's the only way you can fit so many pieces on, on the inside. But with technology being the way it is uh, today, look at this. This is the Moyu Meilong uh, 9x9 and it, is a flat cube. And the reason why a flat cube is good is because, for example, once you've made a bunch of turns uh, like this, say, and then your next turn, you, you know, you want your next turn to be like this way. When there's a flat surface, it means you can sort of like square it on the table and then go on with like your next turn. Whereas for this guy, once I've made a bunch of turns this way, as you can see, I can't really square it on the table because there's nothing really easy for me to like square it against. I actually need to just like physically al align all the pieces and then do my next turn. And and you know, it's not um, terrible, I guess, except with big puzzles, you do a lot of turns, like, you know, upwards of like thousands and thousands of turns, definitely for this guy, you know, per solve. And so having to do that every single time is really quite inconvenient. So it is a very pretty nine by nine, like it's, it's a cool looking puzzle, uh, but, don't understand why they decided to make it pillowed. Having said that, of course, I do have to give this a solve and I'm considering actually just solving like a three by three. It's just a cool thing about the nine. If you only turn layers of three, you can just scramble the whole thing like a three by three and then solve it like a three by three as well. Of course, these days, I actually think one of the main reasons why people um, get large cubes is to make patterns uh, in them. And here, here are a few examples uh, of some really, really cool uh, like uh, Instagrammers uh, who make like the most incredible, like I've no idea how they do it, uh, designs on, on cubes. All right, there you go. Here's my three by three and let's give it a solve. Three, two, one, go. Now, still don't wanna go too quickly because I might end up popping the cube if I go a little bit too fast. So I want to be speedy, but not too speedy, Gonzalez. Insert that guy. Very nice. What do I have now? I've got this LOL, which can be done like this. R U R prime U. And then whenever you see this familiar thing, it's always R U to R prime. Ta -da! And finally, we have uh, an A perm. Very nice. Oh, come on. <laughs> no. Fine, I'll do it this way. And I'm very sure that took uh, like more than a minute. Done, hooray. Only you know my time. But uh, yeah, props to me for solving a three by three with a nine by nine. What have you done with your life? Okay, sorry. <laughs> it's like roasting my audience while I make, make unboxing videos. Sorry, sorry, come back. Don't stop watching. I love you. Let's look at these two bad boys. They're both shaped like pyramids, like pyramids. Ooh, two very fine looking gentlemen. Uh, but as you can see, they are quite different. So this guy is called uh, the coin pyramid, I think. And this one's like the petal um, pyramid. So let's have a look. A little look-sees. Nice. So you can tell they would turn quite differently. Uh, so the petal one turns like this. How cool is that? Right? So you can do whole turns. And I'm not wrong, you can even do half turns. Is it like, yeah, there you go. Oh, dude. So that's cool. It adds like a pretty cool layer of complexity to it, but it also means that you can get things like this. <laughs> it's so great. And I'm already um, regretting um, scrambling it like that. I look like I'm about to enter like some alien portal that's gonna like teleport me somewhere. Imagine giving this to someone and like solve it. They'll be like, Solve what? The coin pyramids. Fortunately, it doesn't actually um, shape shift. I don't think it does. Yeah, there we go. So it's just like these guys that move, but then you can also turn the middle, which is why it's the coin pyramids. And so you end up like, there's complexity there with the colors that um, sort of like can get mixed that way. But otherwise, nothing crazy here. So let's give it a good scramble. It's got a little bit of corner cutting actually. Like if this is a bit off, I can still turn it. Oh, not that way, maybe the other way, yeah. Okay, cool, so the first thing we're gonna do is get all the colors of the tips facing the right way. So, blue here, green, done. And now we're gonna just gradually uh, get the colors uh, in. So I can get that yellow in here by doing this. Turn that out, load it with the color that's meant to be there and bring it back. Now my last yellow is here, so let's do that. Done, that's yellow. Uh, and now let's fix these colors over here. Green's already, I've already got one in green, so let's just keep going with green. So, that end of my final green. Dunskies! Now let's fix these last two. I reckon there could be a bit of a challenge 
with maybe the very last two, but actually wait. <laughs> no, okay, no challenge. <laughs> Zero challenge at all. Uh, that was easy. <laughs> Meanwhile, this. How is it that like the same manufacturer, TE, right, just makes these cubes almost like at the same time, right? It's just like, hey guys, coin, petal, have fun. And it's just like, child's play, goo goo gaga, and like, <laughs> These are like vintage puzzles because these guys actually were released like, I don't know, more like more than 10 years ago. So we have got here, uh, they are both Lanlan cubes, I believe. There we are, Lanlan. Uh, but quite a few other manufacturers, I believe, have had their go uh, with making these puzzles. So we have here the Lanlan Curvy Copter. <laughs> it's actually its name. And the um, Lanlan Rex Cube. Nice, how cool is that? So this guy actually reminds me a lot of the um, Dino Cube. It's got a very similar um, geometry as you can see, like it sort of like, you know, turns this way. Uh, but where it's different is that this is a very simple, you know, like if you turn there, you turn there, the pieces sort of like stay as holes and then you can just like, you know, undo it. Whereas over here, uh, it takes like this center wedge with it. And so if you did that and, you know, like moved it there, if you move this piece back, like you've actually lost that whole that whole center bit. Um, so it's more than just like the tips. It's, it's, it's sort of like the Dino Cube, but with like center bits in the middle. So I don't actually know how much harder that makes it um, to solve, but I mean, I, I guess we'll give it a go and see. Really quickly though, the Kirby Copter. So this guy turns like this. It's really, really cool. If I'm not wrong, you can do like a partial turn. Can you do a partial turn? Yeah, you can, there you go. So you can do partial turns as well, which adds to the complexity. Um, of it so you can like you know partially turn like that and then you can like swap these two guys around and then bring it back which i believe is actually the move that you need uh, when you're solving it to like it's a really like simple way of just like swapping um sections like that but yeah let's, let's scramble the rex cube and see how we go so yes it oh i popped it oh it's a great sign when you're you pop so early. Oh, that went in very easily too. Okay, I suppose it's a good sign as well. Okay, there we go. <laughs> There's so many pieces to think about. Do I like solve edges? Is that how I should think? So this this does feel like a dino cube when I do it that way. An orange can do that. Cool. Let's do the rest of it. So green red's already in place. Ooh, green orange is also in place. Uh, orange blue, which is here. And then this needs uh, blue red, which is up there. What are you doing there, buddy? Get down here. Nice, got it. Let's do one of those cycles. Like in, in, out, out, and see if that does it. And it does, hooray, great, nice. So I've now got like the sort of like outer skeleton, I guess, of the Rex cube. And I just need to feel, fill these like X's in. Okay, let's get our centers in place now. So white's already in place, which is very nice. And back like that and back like that. Yay! Okay, that's all the center's done. Now we just have these four little like internal leaves uh, that we need to move around. And I'm gonna be completely honest and say I have no idea how to do that. But I think there's a tutorial that teaches you how to do it. So I'll be back in one second. Okay, I'm back. I think I know how to do it now. Um, <laughs> it's an algorithm that like swaps it like that. So if I do this and swap it around and move it back, then it will be in place. <laughs> Okay, let's just try this. So I'm gonna swap these two pieces around so the blue will be there when I bring it back in. So you do that and then you go up on right, up on left, down on right, down on left, and then you rotate it so this is on top and you go up on right, up, oh no, 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 up on left first and then up on right, down on left, down on right. And then now you should be able to move this back. It worked! Hooray! And now repeat that 50 million more times. And what da? Oh. I'll do two setup moves. Set up this up and then set this up. And then do a swap and undo both. Ooh, that's scary! I need to remember how I started that. Okay, here we go. Hey, the Rex Cube is done! That was definitely a lot harder than the Dino Cube, but it was still very manageable. There is something about solving puzzles that just makes you feel so accomplished. But that means we only have one puzzle left, and I maybe save the best for last. Ladies and gents, the Pyramorphix. Recently, JR Cuba got this. 
Um, it is a 7x7 seven seven pyramorphics, and he solved it. And I'm thinking, if he can solve it, then I pretty uh, probably can't. So here's a regular 7x7 seven seven file comparison, and like that's our 5x5 five five in the middle, and uh, the outer edge. And as you can see, yeah, exact same thing here. 5x5 five five middle, 5x5, five 5x5, five five, five five five, it's all there. And that large um, outer edge. <laughs> I don't want to scramble this, but I do want to scramble it. <sighs> Okay, this is what I could do. I could try giving it the checkerboard treatment and see what it looks like. So this is what a regular uh, 7x7 looks like. You get a checkerboard treatment. It's very pretty. It's like one of, you know, the quintessential like cube patterns that everyone wants to do really, really quickly. So the question is, what will it look like on the 7x7 pyramorphics? I already regret my choice. Oh, hey, maybe it'll be fine. Oh, that actually already looks so cool. Do look at that. That is so cool. I just want to like leave it like that. That's amazing. Now it is a shape shifting puzzle. So that's why I'm a bit surprised that it hasn't shape shifted. But yeah, maybe it doesn't when you just give it the checkerboard treatment. <laughs> Can we just stop to appreciate that? That is amazing. Oh, that's of course. That's why it looks like this because it only has four colors. It only has like a yellow, red, green, and blue side. Unlike this with like six colors. It looks like a basket weave. I really, really like that. Okay, now I didn't give that like a proper scramble, uh, even though, like I said, I am reluctant. But what if I do, uh, you know, an outer layer thing? So, for example, what if I. Well, let's just fix this. You wanna see some magic? Ta da! I know, movie magic, guys. So, what if I did um, a T perm to this? Just on the outer layer, just to see what it looks like. So, that's our little T perm. <laughs> I can't even tell. Ah, uh, you. Ah, uh, prime, you prime. Oh, what are you doing next? <laughs> okay, so this is what I mean by shape shifting. Look at that. It looks like a puppy. It's like riff, riff. Or like a lion. And then one final. <laughs> Look how tiny that piece is. That's just one entire piece. How do you even recognize this as being as, as being a T-frame? This is also such a good demonstration of the fact that um, only for like large cubes like this, you can get like weird center parodies. So for those of us who know how to solve three by threes, one thing we don't often think about is that um, there are actually quite a lot of algorithms uh, that look like they solve the cube, but the centers um, of each side are actually in a different state as they were at the very beginning. So like this guy, for example, Gantz facing this way, right? If I do a T-perm, by the time I'm done, it's facing that way. And if I do another one, it now faces the other way. And so I have a suspicion that I'm gonna run into a problem here by which if I do another T-perm, this thing is actually gonna be completely the wrong way. And I'm I'm only gonna be able to fix this with like three more T-perms. Let's see if I'm right. So let's do a T-perm again. So R, uh, F prime, and <laughs> yes, that is exactly what happened. Urgh. But this is the 7x7 seven seven pyramorphics, and it is very, very pretty. I mean, just like the checkerboard thing that I did to it before. Ah, oh, so nice. Ladies and gentlemen, here are our 80 marvelous puzzles. And as tradition, I'm going to be giving special awards. Winning the cleverest design award is the multi Scube. Well done, Greg. I don't know how your brain thinks, but yup. You're a genius. Winning the, well, that was easier than I thought award is the time machine that can also double as maracas. Winning the what even is this award is a three-way tie between the puppet cube, the clover pyraminx, and the 4x4 axis cube. And finally, winning the Tingman best puzzle award for replayability and general enjoyment is the Master Pyraminx! This was so much fun, although I personally recommend the Master Pyraminx is made by other brands. But <laughs> nonetheless, it's a really, really fun puzzle, which I highly recommend. Please check out these videos over here if you want to see more big unboxings. Subscribe if you appreciated this video. And as always, thank you Daily Puzzles for making it all possible. Goodbye. Time Machine Magic Cube. <laughs> Ages 3 plus, as if.